here on YouTube and obviously I'm late because why wouldn't you be for your first ever live? Um, I haven't given this kind of much build up at all so I don't know how many of you are going to know it's going on and are going to pop up today but essentially today's video is all about giving you a bit of a tour of the Mr Baker's Cake studio and showing you some of the kind of the clever storage solutions that I use in here to keep my cake decorating supplies manageable, organised, but also um, accessible because of course this is essentially a working kitchen. Um, yeah, now I will preface this video by saying that I do have another room which is, is my baking room. So most of what you will see in here is things that I use for decorating cakes <clears throat> or things that I use for filming videos either for my own channel or for Kenwood or other brands that I work with. So yes, there is some baking stuff in here, but the majority is in the other room. Um, so that might be a bit of a cheat because of course I, I don't have everything in here. But um, hopefully still, it will give you guys some ideas about the ways you can store some of the products that you might find tricky to store. Um, I can see some people have come on, so hi to those people. Um, as I say, because I've never done a YouTube live, bef live before, I have no idea whether I can have chat enabled or anything like that, so apologies. I should have kind of done a bit more prep really before I, I got started but it was kind of one of those crazy mornings and suddenly it was 11 o'clock and I was like oh goodness so I'm going to get started um if you are commenting if there is like a chat stream going on somewhere then um I will jump into that afterwards ah there's a comment I can see a comment there is a chat stream hi the cas 21 there we go that's that's that sorted then what I also haven't done is flipped the camera so everything is going to be backwards as well um but never mind. Um, we are also using natural daylight uh, just because where I'll be moving around the room I thought that studio lighting might look a bit strange. Um, I'm going to try and not dox myself by showing you where I live through the window but we'll see how that goes. Um, and I'm also seeing that natural daylight is doing wonderful things for my skin. Morning Timo. So I'm going to get started and we're going to go kind of from that corner around the room and hopefully end up back here. So I guess without much further ado, let's go on a tour of my cake studio. So I'm taking you off a stand and holding you in my hands. And we're going to go, as I say, over to the first corner. I'll flip the camera. And this is where you come in. Ignore the, uh, the fantastic paint job that we tried to cover up. So um, this room, actually, let's flip it back and tell you this. So this room, when we first moved in, was a, a bedroom. So we're upstairs in my house. You can hear Bobbit going about his business. He's gaming next door at the moment. So if you hear any kind of blood curdling screams, it's a computer game. We're not keeping people locked in the basement or anything. Um, so when we, yeah, when we moved in here, this was a, it was actually a child's bedroom. The walls were an insanely bright shade of pink. And actually there is a video here on my channel, I think it's called something like DIY Fail, where I kind of showed you what we were starting with. Um, so we had like wood chip walls, um, yeah, bright, bright pink paint. So we kind of had to take everything back to nothing. We had everything replastered, the walls, the ceiling, new floor went in. So it was a bit of a, a labor of love, but that, that got us to where we are now. So anyway, without much further ado, let's get back to the tour. So turning around, this obviously is the door and this is where I keep my aprons. Now this might seem like a strange thing to start with, but again, something as simple as a hook, they're here, they're organized. And we've got the various different aprons that I wear for my various different roles. So of course we have Kenwood for when I'm working with them, Renshaw Academy for when I'm working with them, Kenwood Kids Club, who of course I work with every week, and then my own apron as well for my own content. So they live on the back of the door where they're always nice and accessible. Um, my other half has just jumped into the comments to make sure that I tell everyone that he did the bulk of the work in here. So although in the video, you see me starting to scrape the walls, that was probably all that I actually did. Um, and then the rest was uh, 
him, my father-in-law, and the professionals that we brought in to do the, like the plastering and stuff. Um, I, I just, no, I hate decorating. It's probably my number one biggest hate. I hate it, hate it. But anyway, back to the tour. So as we come into the room, there's the door. This is kind of what you see. Again, trying not to give out where I live. So you'll see, first of all, we've got a few wires and plugs and things knocking around because of course this is a filming studio. So you can see here, I've got my ring light, I've got a microphone. This actually is probably the least messy in terms of wiring it's looked because at the moment I've got no cameras or anything plugged in. So that brings us anyway over to kind of this back corner. And this is very much, if I kind of come round, this is where I tend to keep things that I don't use all the time. So you can see here on this unit, when I first saw these units, I was like, I need to have one of these. And actually it hasn't been very practical at all. I think if you had a, maybe a big workspace where you work in different areas, sorry, my hands are really wobbly, then these would be useful, but actually it tended to just get in the way. So it's now shoved into a corner and I keep my baking recipe books and my cake decorating books in there. Um, this on the top is quite cool. So if I zoom in, this is a, a brush holder and I use this for brushes that are awaiting cleaning. What I like about it is it separates them out so they're not kind of touching each other and getting each other dirty. So I'll show you where I keep my clean brushes in a minute, but this is a great place to put them until I need until, until I need, until I actually get around to washing them. So um, if people are interested in that, I can jump in the comments afterwards and link it down, um, yeah, link it down there. But it was just from Amazon and it wasn't very much money at all. Um, moving on over here, this tends to be more kind of like filming stuff and it's all um, kept in these really useful boxes because of course it keeps them out of the way of any kind of um, airbrush colour that might be in the air and things like that. So in there we've got cameras, camera equipment, um, various uh, like the transformers for the Easy Bake Oven, which you'll see is, is there, the one that is still working, um, and various bits and pieces like that. And then of course on top we've got um, one of my dummy cakes, which was made for a magazine tutorial last year. And this is just some products that the lovely Carol at Sugar and Crumb sent me through to to try out which i haven't got around to yet so they're sat on top to remind me to use them similarly to bridget's ganashing kit you've seen me use the round one and i showed you in the, my latest what's new in cake video she sent me the square one so that's also sat here to remind me that i need to to use it at some point soon so that's all that's on the back wall it's other than that it's very clear and white because that means i get lots of light bouncing around the room um, which is good for filming, of course. Um, and then if we move around to the other side, which you can see behind me, a lot of this will be familiar to you. Some of it won't. But if we start up in the corner here, oh, by the way, this is my blackout blind for when I'm filming usually. Oh, somebody is, Emily is asking what books I have on the trolley. That's a very good question. Let's go back. So, <clears throat> we have got Sweet by Otto Lenghi, and I should explain, by the way, that these are arranged in order of size. That's all. So we've got Sweet by Otto Lenghi. We've got The Big Book of Baking. I have no idea who that's by. It was a gift. I've got Mitch Turner's Cake School, which is a fantastic book if you want to learn more about the science of baking without it being too complicated. We've got Designer Cake Decorating, which was by a team of artists with Squire's Kitchen, including Emily. Um, it's just a fabulous book. We've got Delia's Happy Christmas. And again, if you've watched any of my Christmas content, you'll see that I talk about that a lot. When I first got into baking, Delia's Christmas recipes were very much the ones that I, I started using. And so th that is now my go-to. We've got the Contemporary Cake Decorating Bible, which again was a gift when I first started. Tea and Cake by Lisa Faulkner, which is awesome. Uh, Candice Brown's Comfort. Both of these I got from, like, so from Lisa, from Candice, um, with lovely messages in, so that's cool. We've got the Sprinkles Baking Book. Um, we've got one of the British Bake Off books, Wanton Bakes by Ed Kimber of Bake Off fame, The Modeling Guide Animals by Etty Van Eck, so Cake Duchess, Natalie Porter's Immaculate Confections, book one, Sugar Flowers, 
The Celtic Cakers, which is a tutorial book, again, put together by a team of amazing Irish artists. And then the Cadbury's Mini Egg Cookbook, which of course you saw me using in a video a few weeks ago. And then up on top, we've got the Cube Book of Sugar Flowers by Cassie Brown, Peggy Portion's Cakes in Bloom, Cyril's Cake Adventure by Raynath Webb, and Incredible India, the first book, is in there as well. So <clears throat> those are my books. Back over here, oh, that's me, wrong button. So back over here, we've got my Cake International certificates on the wall. And then on top of this unit here, we've got my Kenwood Mixers, it's a steam pug and the gorgeous mini version of him that I got for, uh, for my birthday, I should say. And also my Kenwood hand mixer, which is no longer available, um, but they do a very similar one. So if you like that, Kenwood do have one. Also hanging here, we have my stunning painted apron from Emily, who is watching. So I know Emily still has that available. So if you like that, you can track it down via her website. Emily, feel free to link it in the comments. And then this you'll recognize as a uh, Ikea storage unit. Um, this is really old. You can see actually how discolored it's become. So that's white. This is the color of the unit. And this actually used to live in my classroom. Um, and then it came home and I got the doors for it. And this is kind of, if I open them all, this is kind of a bit of a mishmash of various different things. So we'll go through them. <clears throat> So starting off up here, this is um, products that I've been sent um, by brands or by my friends that I either haven't yet used in a video or that I'm planning on using in a specific way in a video. So that's what's in that one. Similarly in here, this is kind of products that I might have used, but they don't really have a natural home. So they all tend to just get shoved in here. This one it tends to be the really messy one. And I did have a massive sort out in here over the weekend so that it wouldn't be quite so embarrassing to show you because this was bulging at the seams. Down here, we have a random, uh, I wanna say electrical, but electrical mechanical things. So in here, we've got a uh, electric turntable, pasta machine, um, my thermo pen, temperature uh, thermometer, that's the word digital weighing scales, blowtorch, um, kind of all the bits and pieces that I don't use too often. Oh, this is cool. This is for carving polystyrene and it does it using heat. So you get a really nice clean cut. Again, if you're interested in one of those, I can link it in the video description later. This is my cupcake cupboard. And oh, I didn't draw attention to the fact that in here, obviously Ikea have lots and lots of things for these units. Obviously the doors is one, but also these little shelves which just makes them infinitely more usable. So yes, there's one of those in here too. And yeah, this is my cupcake cupboard. So in here I keep my cupcake cases, my foam balls, um, sprinkles, my cupcake Cora, um, my icing scoop. Um, thank you for the, to the person who just said it's very tidy. As I say, I have just had a massive sort out because I knew I was going to do this video. It was almost like, the, the video forced me to, to make sure everything was looking its best. So yeah, it doesn't always look like this. Down here is kind of a miscellaneous structure cupboard, which links to a drawer I'll show you in a minute. But yeah, again, just stuff that I don't use too often. There it is. Um, this cupboard here is another kind of miscellaneous one. So we've got some overflow rainbow dust products. So the rest are kind of out on display. This is where I keep the backups when they run out. And then we've got like an extra cake release spray, an extra edible glaze, extra piping gel. So just when the ones that I keep out and use all the time have run out, this is where I kind of come to refill them. That bottle back there with the orange top is um, for uh, putting syrup onto your cakes. And again, I think it was from Amazon. I can link it if you're interested. Then down here is all my lettering for cakes. Um, I don't have a huge amount. I got rid of a load kind of a couple of years ago just because I'm not a big fan of messages on cakes. Um, so yeah, there's, there's just, I think maybe one set of clip -its, a couple of sets of tap -its, um, one really simple cookie embossing set, um, one complete set of the cake star cutters. And then we've got uh, just a random set of of letter and number cutters that are really deep so you can do the freestanding ones and then last but not least ribbons 
so I used to have a massive collection of ribbons and then I realized actually it was just a mess. So in here I keep ribbons and glue sticks just for putting ribbons around cake boards. And then tucked down the side, we have all of my backdrops. Um, so I've got white, I've got black, I've got a cardboard freestanding one. And then tucked in there, we've also got non-stick matting, which I am obsessed with and use everywhere, as you'll see. The kind of the foil paper for covering homemade cake boards and structures. And there is also some, some dowels, metal and wooden dowels in there as well that I use for building structures. Um, gosh, I'm out of breath. Also tucked in the space there, we've just got a couple of cutting boards as well. And don't worry, anything that's on the floor does get washed before it's used. That's kind of the habit I have. I wash everything before I use it, even if it is clean. Um, moving across, this is probably the bit you're most familiar with, which is my, my usual cake backdrop. And at the top here, we just have some, some old dummy cakes, although actually a couple are real and are probably revolting now. So this is one that I quite often teach as like a demonstration or as a class. So he, he tends to travel a lot. This is the topper from my Onward Cake tutorial right here on my YouTube channel. That is a schnauzer that I did as a live demonstration online when we first went into lockdown. That is the topper from the Greatest Showman cake I did a few years ago for my godson, where I got loads and loads of artists from all over the country to um, create pieces for it. And then we assembled them all together. That was by Vicky Tether. Um, Oh, and it rotated as well on the cake. It was awesome. That is a miniature recreation of um, one of my wedding cakes made by Sarah Bright of Daisy Cakes. And then, of course, we have just one of my many, many pugs. Down here, we have the Christmas pug um, who was at Cake International. We have the gonk who was a live class last year and proved very popular. This is a penguin, this is so old. This penguin was on my godson's birthday cake years ago and the crown is actually from a totally different cake and I just popped it on there randomly and it's still there. This is also from the Greatest Showman cake and this piece was made by Becky. Oh, I'm having a complete brain freeze. Becky, what's your surname? Um, but yes, anyway, my friend Becky, who was hugely talented, she's not doing many cakes anymore, she's kind of, um, moved Jenkins, Becky Jenkins. She's moved more into kind of pastel drawing and she's incredible. And then this is the tiger that I made at a class many years ago with Zoe Fox and just some random flowers. So this you've all seen many times before. This is the Pro Gel wall and these shelves were actually from B&M and they cost I think about four pounds each. Um, I completely stole the idea from my friend Nikki, who has them in her cake workshop, and they've just been so useful. So they're called picture shelves, they're designed to have frames on them, so they have a little lip on the front here that you can lean the frame against and then against the wall. Um, but yeah, they've just been so useful. Um, and then this is the thing that most people are always interested in, and this is a kind of a wall-mounted rack from Ikea, that you get loads of different attachments for. And this, as soon as I saw this, was like, that's going in the backdrop when I eventually get my studio. So before the studio even happened, it was like, I, I need one of those. And you can see I've got loads of different attachments for it. I've got these wall-mounted bags, which um, I used to keep attachments for my mixers in, but um, now it, they're kind of just miscellaneous. We've got a few lovely gift wooden spoons that I've been given from children I've taught. Obviously, you can see up here, we've got one of Molly's tutorials for the Creature Creator. These hanging pots are so useful. And the things I keep in these are the things that I use all the time. So we've got my ribbon cutter, some mini scissors, the plunger cutters that I reach for most often, cocktail sticks. And then on top of those, we've got a little cap that I made using one of Zoe's Fancy Cakes' tutorials that she based on Treacle, my cat. We've got the topper that I made with Vicky Tether in a recent video. Um, and then moving over here, we have got some of the floating shelves for the bracket, for the, the this, whatever it's called again, I've already forgotten. Um, and on here, I tend to keep just some of the, the latest products from the brands that I work with. So you can see here, we've got the new Renshaw Frostings. So there's a, a chocolate, a vanilla and a salted caramel. 
We've got my airbrush colors from Rainbow Dust. We've got the metallic paints from Rainbow Dust, um, Renshaw Royal Icing, and then in there you can just see Rainbow Dust, Edible Glue, um, Edible Glaze, Glaze Remover, Tylo Powder, and CMC. Uh, oh, sorry, Gum Tragicanth are all in there. And then this gorgeous chap who was made for me by Natalie Porter of Immaculate Confections. Um, there's just a few other bits dotted around. So um, something that Molly sent me and just some random bits and pieces that I put there just to add interest. These I love, and these are probably my favorite thing on the whole backdrop because these allow me to sort my tools so that they're always out, but they're always organized and tucked away, if that makes sense. So here, they're kind of organized by brand, I guess. So these are all PME tools. We've got the, the normal PME tools and then the PME mi uh, mini tools. This is chair art, and so in here you, we've got everything from the silicone tools, um, ball tools, the, the kind of the flexi smoothie thing to working with chocolate. This is all my brushes, or all my clean brushes, and there's a bit of an assortment in there. So some I got on from Amazon, some Wilton ones, Immaculate Confections, um, uh, these awesome ones from uh, the Sugar Press. So these have got lids on them. Then we've got just kind of random extras. So again, things I use all the time, but they don't fit in with a brand. Down here, we have got um, the Innovative Sugar Wax tools and Innovative, innovative Sugar Wax um, craft knife and everything. And then over here is the um, Cake Duchess tools, um, Carlos Lachetti's tools, Sylvia Mancini's brushes. So this is kind of like names um and then over here we have vicky tether's beautiful book which is stunning and if you don't have it you should really get it and the kenwood kids club booklet which has got some of my recipes in and the rose that i made with natalie in a recent video i think that's everything that's stored here obviously you can see there's a few kind of like models and cakes and things that i've made um also just displayed here sorry if you can hear my belly rumbling by the way i should have had breakfast before i did this as you can see, this chap is not aging particularly well. Um, Renshaw would like me to bring him to Cake International, but I think I might need to remake him if I'm going to do that because yeah, he's a, he's not aging particularly well. It's I think it's the edible glaze, but never mind. And then under the here, of course, we've got these units. If I move back, you can see them properly. And these were from Ikea as well, but they're actually freestanding kitchen units because I did go down the route of trying to do a, a fully fitted kitchen with Ikea. And then I had loads of problems. Um, they changed the installers that they used and they suddenly wanted to like double or quadruple, I think it was the installation price. And obviously we weren't gonna do that. So I ended up buying some freestanding units, putting them together myself and they've done the job perfectly. In these, um, I keep all of my sugar paste. And I've had a few people ask actually, how do I store my sugar paste? Whoops, I'll swing around here. So this, this is where I keep all of my sugar paste. Um, and most of you will know that I tend to color my paste myself most of the time. So here we've got uh, Rancho Extra, both the original and the marshmallow flavor. Um, and I don't know if you know, but they're, they're kind of redoing all their packaging at the moment. So that's the new packaging for the Rancho Extra. We've got just normal ready to roll icing in white as well, because I do prefer the softer stuff for my sculpted cakes just because it has less bounce and less stretch so texture and things tend to not bounce back as much i do have some colors down here um usually that's because they're like a focus product so we've got last year's color of the year the sapphire blue this year's color of the year the deep purple although i've apparently tucked a couple of brown ones in front of it um and then over here this is the full range of the the new frosting. So again, we've got the Belgian chocolate ganache, which is just coming out. Uh, the personalized me plain icing. So that's a completely plain uh, kind of buttercream style frosting. It has no flavor, no color, and it takes color really well. Salted caramel, the vanilla frosting, the chocolate frosting, and of course the royal icing. Um, and then down there, we've got other products. So uh, marzipan, flour and modeling paste, modeling paste, and the uh, now discontinued modeling a uh, belgian chocolate modeling paste which when they discontinued it i basically bought up 
all of it that I could find. And you can see the way I organize it is actually by keeping it in the boxes that it comes in. So if you use a lot of sugar paste, I would highly recommend buying it in bulk because it comes in the boxes that they, that, you know, they, they ship it in and then you can use that for display too. So yes, that's how we saw my sugar paste out. I've just head butted my ring light. Um, I had a few people ask that question on social media. And then this drawer is, it's kind of organized. So we have piping tips and piping bags. Um, my scrubbing brush, which you saw me use in last week's tutorial, cutlery, measuring cups and spoons, and then kind of just like spatulas, palette knives, um, and so on. So it, it looks messy, but I promise it is as organized as I can get it. Although I am gonna show you this. So this was my grandmother's, um, and she died when I was in my 20s. You can see it's very old. Um, but this is a, just a, a beautiful, stunning cake slice. And I just like to keep that in here because she was my original inspiration for getting into baking and cake decorating. So it's nice to have something of hers. And then over here we have got the other, the drawer unit. And so in the top drawer is a true thing of beauty. This is all my rainbow dust, edible dust colors, glitters, and luster dusts. Um, I've tried to organize them by color, but like there's a few that are clearly in the wrong place. Now I'm, I'm looking at it again. So like this deeper uh, pink color doesn't really sit right there, but never mind. Um, I can't remember who it was who originally um, inspired me to put my colors upside down. It might be Natalie Porter, it might have been Paul Bradford, but this way you can actually see the color of the dust rather than the label, which of course isn't always a true reflection of the color. So by having them upside down, checking they're sealed nice and tight, of course, you can see all of your colors nice and easily. And to stop them moving around, I've got some non-slip matting in the bottom of the drawer, which as I mentioned, I'm obsessed with and I use it everywhere. This, the rest of the drawers are kind of like the, the, the other sorts of tools that I need to use a lot. So more kind of tools for building structures and things. So we've got things in here like pliers, we've got um, uh, wire cutters, gardening shears, by the way, these are these were completely brand new and clean when I first got them. They're what I use for cutting dowels. Because they're curved, the dowel sits really nicely inside. It doesn't move around. You can get a nice clean cut. So that's my top tip for cutting dowels. Drill bits, uh, hammer, um, these things that I've forgotten the name of. <laughs> The thing about going live is you immediately forget everything. Obviously my glue gun and everything. So that's what's in here. And then the bottom drawer is more of the same. So my drill, my jigsaw, um, various nuts, bolts, screws, etc. So this is kind of all the stuff I use for building cake structures. And then moving on, this, thank you, spirit level. That's the word I forgot. This shelving unit here again is from ikea and i've had this for years this originally was in my baking room um, and i bought this because it's essentially a giant drying rack or cooling rack sorry so when i used to bake a lot more this was would be where i called my cake so i'd take them straight out of the oven and put them on these shelves to cool um, it meant that it was all contained in one area and i didn't have to have cooling racks all over the place um, I still use it for that occasionally if I'm doing a cake that requires a lot of real cake. Um, so like a multi-tiered wedding cake or what have you. But the rest of the time it is just more storage. And on here you can see a couple of my old cakes. So the deep purple cake I did for Renshaw and my latest Sugar Spooks cake, which also is not aging well, but never mind. We've got some of my favorite cake stands. Um, so this one here was actually from Giraffe, you know, the, the shop. This is one of the Moss and Milk Glass stands, and I would love to have a whole range of them in different colors, but they're so expensive. I think they're around about 90, 100 pounds. This one here is from Prop Options, and it's just one of their lovely, simple wooden stands. It looks great with like nearly naked cakes um, and more kind of like home bake style cakes. And then this one here is from Bramble Sky. You've seen that in my videos before. I'm obsessed with it. Um, and I still need to create the perfect kind of 
dummy cake for my backdrop to display on that. But again, if anyone's interested in any of these, give me a shout, I can link them. Down here we have some of my turntables. Um, this is just a random no-name one that I bought at a cake show. This is my Innovative Sugar Wax one, and this is the new PME one that you saw, I think, in last week's video. Um, and this is the stand that I watch Netflix on when I'm working on cakes. Underneath, we've got, so this, because, sorry, this is two shelving units stacked on top of each other, um, which is another thing I love about them. They just come with these little joins. But because of that, you also then get like a mini shelf between the two, which is great for um, the prop options cake compass, which is for covering dummy cakes. My acrylic boards for using with, when I'm turning cakes over, using my sharp edge smoother and things like that. This is my portable hob that I use for filming Kenwood videos. This here is really cool. So, you know that, is it diamond art or something? I know lots of people were really into it a while ago. This is a board for doing diamond art um, and it just lights up. So it's like a, a, a light box, but really small. Um, and when I do my my doodle cakes, which I've done, I think, for Cake Masters and for Renshaw now, um, it's a great way to trace through your design onto your really thin uh, flat paste. So if anyone fancies having a go at one of my tutorials using doodle cakes, that is a really good tool to have. And then this is just a marble slab for tempering chocolate. Down here, this tends to be kind of a bit of a dumping ground. Um, this is where I keep like notepads and pens and things for when I'm, you know, working on something quickly need to write something down. Although the top one I actually use for when I do online quizzes with my friends. We've got some of the PME crystal cake boxes tucked in the corner there. And then on the bottom shelf, we have got, well, and underneath, we've got some of the Molly Robbins Creature Creator stuff. We've got my chair art tool case, which is what I use when I go to cake shows and go and demo and things. Remember those days? Um, and then a random box full of the various magazines and newspapers that I've been in over the years, plus random paperwork, including the warranty for my newest Kenwood mixer. Then, carrying on around the room, this is a lot neater than it normally looks. This is the clipboard wall, and this was probably the first thing that I was insistent my studio had to have because when I first got into cake decorating and used to watch all the shows like Amazing Wedding Cakes and Ace of Cakes, Duff had a wall with clipboards where he put all of his orders, and I was like, oh, I want one of those. I don't take orders but I still have a clipboard wall. So normally on here, it's got kind of the upcoming projects I'm working on, the designs, um, kind of contracts, those sorts of things, just so I don't forget anything. But obviously I have taken them down for this video because um, we sign um, various NDAs and things not to talk about project projects and, until they're public. So instead at the moment, you've just got some random stuff like a Kenwood Kids Club membership card, a key ring, a Zoe's pin badge, a lovely spoon that my friend Julie got me, who I believe is watching, and the original artwork that went into the Judah wedding cake. So there you go. At the side here, this unit um, is also from Ikea, I believe, and I'm gonna go around the other side to show you it a bit better. Um, really um, cheap, I think, from memory, and it's just, it's metal but with a wooden top on it. Um, the wood is completely untreated, so I covered it with this non-slip matting, sorry, slippy matting. And then this is where I keep the cake tins that I use the most often. You'll, you'll notice that these ones went through the dishwasher, but we're not going to talk about that. But so this is where all my PME tins are. I've got the round ones and the square ones. Um, we've got my, my bunt tin in here, mini loaf tins. Uh, tiny little tins that I use for like chocolate fondants and things, PME square tins and some other tins back there. I've got some hexagon tins. Um, and yeah, just a, a really useful way to store them. And again, you'll see non-slip matting because we use it everywhere. And then on top is my Ag Bay cake leveler, my rolling pins that I use the most often, some random scales that just pop up all over the place because they don't really have a home. Currently some old cake dummies, um, and that's kind of it. Oh, and also 
uh, rolling guides. So these ones are actually from the Little Venice Cake Company, which is Mitch Turner's brand. Um, I still use them all the time, just uh, to give me a consistent kind of depth of my sugar paste. So if you're someone who struggles with rolling your sugar paste thin, that's um, they're a really good option. Um, this is my kingpin, and this weighs a ton. And if I ever do a, a tour of my baking room, I actually dropped it once and smashed a tile on the floor. So it's very heavy. Um, and so to stop it rolling around, it now lives on its own little kind of rolling pin holder, which I also got from Amazon. So pretty much everything in here is from Amazon or from Ikea. Then we have my workbench, which you've seen many, many times before. And on top of that, we have a Lazy Susan from Ikea, also with non-slip matting on. And that's where I put ingredients when I'm doing my Kenwood cooking videos. Um, my largest work board. And then underneath we have drawer units that look like this. I'm sure every cake person has these. These are so old. I promise they're not dirty. They are just stained with years and years of airbrush. But in here we've got plunger cutters, various other cutters, just kind of like random shaped ones. There's like a gingerbread cutter, Batman logo. Um, yeah, it's a bit of a, a dumping ground. Um, this is all my isomalt stuff and cake support pins, which are basically the posh, posh dowels I now use. These are from Cake Tools Direct. Um, more chair art tools because I'm obsessed with them. Um, but I don't use more than are on the back wall. So these are just in here. Also my gorgeous rolling pin that Immaculate Confections just sent me. Thank you, Natalie and Chris. Um, and also my extruder, which I never use, but it's in there anyway. Um, oh, that's my Immaculate Confections drawer. They now have their own drawer. And this is uh, my other flower making drawer. So loads and loads of random bits and pieces in there. I don't really make a huge amount of flowers, but yes. And then over here, airbrushing stuff, uh, various molds. I do have more molds, but I don't really use a lot of molds. So these are the ones that I probably use the most. And then the rest are in a, a box hidden behind the sugar paste in uh, the, the rental cupboards. This is smoothers, scrapers, etc. So at the front here, we have like edge scrapers, metal ones, plastic ones, and so on. And then we have flexi smoothers behind that, various different brands. Tucked away at the back, we've got bench scrapers. Um, and then there's a profroster there. I never use the profroster. Um, I never got on with it, but I know lots of people swear by it. You'll see again, non-slip matting in the drawer. Um, and this is actually a hemming tool, but it, it's a fantastic edge scraper for really tall cakes. So, yes. Underneath, this is random cake things that I don't use very often, but didn't have another home for. So the PME geometric cutters, um, I used one of those on my sister's wedding cake um, a while ago, um, but they live in here. Um, there's a cake frame, which I've never used. The Easy Drip Cutter, which I showed you in a video a while ago. Um, these are in here just because they're really big and I had nowhere else to put them, but I have already used them loads. And underneath there, we've got um, some like Evil Cake Genius stencils. We've got um, Avalon's uh, templates for drawing cakes. There's some cake buttercream, what are they called? Cake cloths from the Oh uh, gosh, the, who are they, what are they called? Uh, can't reach. Uh, Queen of Hearts Cakes, that's them. And I also keep my wires in here as well. So um, my flower making wires, which I also use for making armatures too. So they're just in here because it's a really nice wide drawer. Um, and then the bottom drawer is the cutters that I use probably the most often. So we've got oval cutters, square cutters, round cutters. Um, oh, and then random cutters that I have never used, so are still in packets. Um, so yes, those are all there. And these are actually old Renshaw icing tubs, um, which just happen to fit absolutely perfectly. So if they are still around, highly recommend those. Sorry if I'm making you seasick by all the wobbling, by the way. 
Um, and then I think last but not least, we just have this unit on the end, which again is from Ikea. It has a bowl of water on the top. I always have one at hand when I'm working on cakes. Um, and here's just kind of the stuff that I use all the time. So we've got my, the turntable that I reach for the most, my other work boards, my steamer, tracks and corn flour, icing sugar, edible glue. And then underneath that is all of my airbrushes. So I've got a few different ones. I always say to people, if you've not tried airbrushing before and you want to give it a go, um, go for an entry level model. Um, and I have worked with the Chlorella Cakes airbrush for years and years and years and years. Um, and in fact, I only ended up buying these ones when I started doing huge, huge projects or I wanted a bit more control. But yeah, if you've not tried airbrushing before, Chlorella Cakes airbrush is fabulous. I think, I think, I think, I think, turn around, that is everything. Are you level? No, of course you're not, we're never level. See if I can make you level. Ow. And there you go, guys. So that is kind of how I organize my, my studio and how I store everything. I hope I didn't forget anything, but if you have any questions or if there's any products you're like, I really struggle to store, mm, then do let me know. I did put a shout out on my social media and people are specifically about colors. So obviously we've talked about all my um, gel colours are just out on display. Um, I know some people struggle with colours leaking. I have found by having my Pro Gels out, upright, on display, they don't leak. So I don't know whether it's storing them in other ways that do that, but yeah, I've never struggled with them leaking at all. You saw, of course, my dusts are beautifully organised in here. Um, they. I haven't always been like this. I used to keep them in little flat trays with lids and had them stacked up in one of those cupboards over there. But now I can see them and it's so much better and I actually love this and took a photo of it to send it to my friends once it was done. Um, and then airbrush colours, because I only use the, the small rainbow dust ones, they fit nicely on the shelves back there. But um, when I used to use other brands, um, I did find that the big bottles used to leak all the time. So the fact that the Rainbow Dust ones don't is one of the reasons why I completely switched to them and have no others now because, yeah, they, just, they do the job perfectly. Um, and that's not me saying that as a brand ambassador. That's me saying that because cleaning up airbrush colour that had leaked used to be one of my least favourite jobs in the entire world. Somebody else asked about um, wire, so florist wire. Um, you saw that's kept in those really long drawers and then all my other flower making equipment is kept in those two drawers you saw down there, the smaller ones. Um, what else do people want to know about? Sugar paste, of course, you saw is just in these cupboards. Now, I appreciate I have quite a huge collection of sugar paste. Um, but what I will say is before I had this much and had this much space taken up by it, I used to use the really useful boxes and then I just organized those by color. So I had like a bright, so I had a pastels and then I had like a black white, no, a white on its own, sorry. And then a black, gray and brown box. Um, and those four really useful boxes you saw over in the corner with the electrical stuff in used to be what I used for my sugar paste. In terms of storing sugar paste, once you've opened it, I always have um, a roll of really cheap, um, plastic bags um, and I will use these like I'll reuse them until they essentially completely fall apart I would love to find a better way of storing sugar paste that doesn't use plastic but as yet I haven't found one so that's why I use these but I do buy the really cheap ones because they're so thin and flimsy that hopefully they they break down quicker than other better quality ones um, so yeah that's that I just saw somebody pop up with a question and I didn't actually take it in. Can I, can I look at it? Nope. Oh, I can. There we go. Would you recommend mixing paint with a vodka and using it to airbrush? Oh, I can see all the messages. Let's not look at them all now because that will confuse me. Um, when I am using colour to paint, I don't use vodka. I use dipping solution, which was in one of those cupboards over there. 
Personally, I don't run it through an airbrush because if you, again, if you have um, kind of an entry level airbrush, so um, any of the ones kind of from from Amazon generally, the, the ones that are brought out by like brands, um, they tend to have a max pressure of 30 PSI, which isn't strong enough to push a powder that is suspended in a solution through them. So they get blocked really easily. The same goes for if you're using metallics, um, even the ready mixed metallics, um, they are essentially still a powder that is suspended in a solution. And a 30 PSI airbrush isn't powerful enough to push those through, which is why people struggle with them blocking. Um, if you have a more powerful airbrush where you can control the pressure and can turn the PSI up, then absolutely yes, um, you should be able to use powders and gels mixed with, with vodka or dipping solution and what have you. But otherwise, I would recommend just sticking to the basic water-based airbrush paints because um, that's another thing. The ethanol-based airbrush paints are also powder suspended in a solution. So yeah, um, if people are interested in airbrushing, um, I've been airbrushing for well, the entire time I've been decorating cakes. It's one of the first things. In fact, my first ever cake was an airbrushed cake. Um, and so, yeah, if people would be interested in kind of airbrushing tips, then let me know. Or <clears throat> I'd highly recommend taking a class with someone like Chlorella Cakes, um, Dinky Doodle. They all have fantastic classes on how to use your, your airbrushing to, to get the full use out of it, to get the full effect out of it. Um, one of my favourite things that Dawn Butler of Dinky Doodle does is she gets people to practice airbrushing in a child's colouring book because that gets you used to staying in control, staying within the line, building up shading and things like that. So yeah, I highly recommend checking out either of those talented ladies. Um, what else have people been saying? Uh, Joseph has a white PME airbrush. So yeah, um, if it's the one I'm thinking of, Joseph, that's, yeah, that's one of these kind of entry level ones that has a max PSI of about 30. So I probably wouldn't try running powder through it unless you kept it really thin. Um, and um, you would probably have to take your airbrush apart to wash it before you could use it again, which isn't, you know, isn't something that people shouldn't do. You should absolutely get used to the process of taking your airbrush apart and putting it back together because good airbrush maintenance does require that you do that and deep clean it every now and then anyway. And in fact, two of my airbrushes are currently in the kitchen, um, disassembled. I've just uh, given them a really thorough clean and they're laid out now drying on some kitchen roll. So yeah, definitely recommend. There are videos on YouTube. In fact, Dawn Butler has one of how to take apart and put back together your airbrush. So check them out, have a go. Um, and the only thing I will say is there's a tiny little metal piece that slides in behind the, the lever. Uh, make sure you put that back in the right way around because that was the thing I used to do wrong all the time when I first started. Um, so Emily is too scared to try airbrushing. What? We'll have a conversation. Um, let's have a look. Um, dog in the bag. So the dog in the bag is one of Molly Robbins's creature creator tutorials, um, which I bought. Oh gosh, before Christmas, I think quite a while before Christ Christmas, in fact, and I haven't got around to doing it yet. So the tutorial guide behind is what's tucked in behind him, that blue piece of paper. And he's, again, he's there to pressure me to actually do it. Um, if, if I put things away, I forget they exist. So I need to be able to see them. So that's why he's there. Um, so yeah, the stand from the king pit for the kingpin was from Amazon. What I'll do is jump back in later on and I'll edit the video to add a full description where I say this is from here and this is from here and so on. Um, my husband has just realised that the chip in the floor in the kitchen was from me dropping my kingpin, so that's excellent. Um, lots of people telling you, telling me that the spirit level is called a spirit level. Um, Chris asks, what annoys me about my studio, if anything? Um, first of all, I'm going to tell you what I love about it, because the, the baking room um, downstairs is off the kitchen through an archway, and... If that is left kind of like at the end of a project, if, if I can't just leave it and walk away because 
it's still there. It's still out and it's still making you feel bad. Um, similarly, when I just used to make cakes in the kitchen, you had to put every single thing away to make dinner or so somebody else could use the kitchen. And what I love now is that if I've been working on a project all day um, and it's finally finished and it's silly o'clock in the morning, I can just shut the door and walk away and then come back and deal with it later on. Um, and that's the great thing about having a dedicated creating space um, is that you, you can just separate your work from your, I don't know why I was going to do this, it is my work, but you can separate your work from your home life. Um, what don't I, oh, and I also like, of course, the fact that I designed it to be a space that works for me. So everything, mostly, is within arm's reach of where I normally sit or stand where I'm, when I'm creating. So that's what I love. What I hate is it could be bigger. Um, purely because I would love to have some more storage. Um, I'm already planning on changing that four shelf unit over there into an eight one, just so I can fit more stuff in there. And then I could bring more of the kind of the stuff that's kept in the room downstairs um, up, to, um, up to this room as well. Um, for example, obviously, most of you know that I work with Kenwood and um, very thankful that they sent me a huge amount of their products and currently they would all live in the baking room, whereas like natural fat, they would be much more useful up here. So having a bit more space for like all the attachments for the different mixes and everything would be cool. Um, I also want to put some more soundproofing in because I think sometimes I can get a bit echoey in here. Um, oh, and I want to put in a, a kind of a bit of a rig on the roof as well so that I can do top down filming and things like that too. But, you know, one day. What else people saying? Oh, there are, that's why I'm getting really confused. So I've got Emily, as in Angela's daughter is watching. And then I've got Emily, as in Emily Hankins, um, painter watching. That's what's confusing me. So all the times that I've been talking about, right, yeah, I've got it. Sorry guys, or ladies, um, that was very confusing. Um, where did I get the phone holder from? So do we mean this one? Um, this was actually a gift um, from Bobbit, so I don't know where it came from, but perhaps he can tell us. He is watching, so he can comment. Um, or there's the one that you are on at the moment, which is just a, a, a bog standard phone holder from Amazon that slots into a regular, um, I don't know how to explain it. I can't really show you without taking this apart. So. In front of me now, I have a ring light, which is not switched on. And then there is a mount in the ring light to attach a camera to. And then I have a, a phone holder that is screwed in in the same way a camera would be into the mount. So it's in the center of the ring. Of course, the ring isn't turned on. Um, if you want to get into my filming setup, that's a whole nother matter. Um, you probably saw flashes of it as I was walking around, but I have two huge softbox lights, one in that corner, one in that corner, and then a ring light in the center. Um, and again, once I have a, a ceiling mounted rig, I would love to add some more top down lights as well, because sometimes if I'm filming here, the, the lights are on me and I'm really bright, but it basically means that this disappears into darkness. So it'd be nice to have some way of lighting everything. But yes, anyway, any other questions? A couple of people asking after Bobbit and Treacle. They are absolutely fine. Treacle is probably sat outside the door right now being cross because she's not allowed in here. And so she does just sit outside the door um, and every now and then she'll just kind of shout at me. Um, let's have a look. Lots of people being wowed by the extent of my sugar paste and colors collection. I will explain, of course, because I work with Renshaw and Rainbow Dust, I do get sent product by them to use. So um, it's not that I'm hoarding it, it's essentially that they, they, they just send me whenever, you know, whenever I'm, I'm running low, I can just ring them up and be like, I need some more of this. So they do look after me really well. Um, I have heard some horror stories about people who work with brands, but I have always said that I will only work with brands that I already use exclusively. So I've always worked, I use Renshaw products for my cake decorating. It's what I could get hold of when I started. So it's what I've stayed using and that's why I ended up working with them. Uh, similarly, Kenwood, my grandmother had a Kenwood stand mixer. So when I was looking to get my own, it was, Kenwood was the 
the first organisation I looked to. Um, my hand mixer up there was uh, on our wedding registry, so I've always been kind of Team Kenwood, so yeah, that's why I work with them. Um, yeah, and both organisations uh, are brilliant to work with, they do look after us, and I am very grateful for the opportunities that they have given me. But anyway, I think, I think that is everything unless anyone has any last minute questions. I was expecting this video to be about half an hour long and it has been just shy of an hour. So um, yes, this, this is your last chance to jump in, ask any other questions um, before I wrap things up. What I will say very quickly is apologies, the production values have been uh, markedly, marked? The production values have been a lot lower in this week's video, but it's simply because I figured this was the easiest way to do it. I could answer your questions straight away. I could show you things in more detail that you wanted to see. Um, and rather than shooting a video where I just walk around and show you everything and then try and edit it together. Um, one thing I have realised I didn't show you, but you did see it earlier, is when we looked at the electrical shelves, I also have um, like a mobile weather station. Um, it was originally Bobbitt's and he bought it for the house, but I stole it for in here because it tells me the temperature outside, the temperature inside um, in this room. It tells me, and we have a sensor outside, by the way, it tells me the humidity um, outside and in this room. So you know how much we will struggle with humidity. Um, so I know if the humidity is getting slightly high, I know I need to bring in the dehumidifier um, to bring it down again. Um, and just various other useful bits of information that are good to know about a, a, a studio space where I'm working with uh, sugar paste and florist paste and what have you. So yeah, highly recommend those. Similarly, highly recommend having a dehumidifier because um, when it is really humid, so when it's particularly wet and raining or in the summer when it's particularly hot and humid, um, your, uh, your models and your cakes and uh, particularly sugar flowers can absorb moisture from the air, go soft again, and then droop. Um, if you remember my doodle wedding cake, so the really tall, I think it was a five tier cake that was covered in loads of really flat pieces of flower paste that I'd drawn on. Um, when we had some really humid weather last summer, they all just started drooping over because they'd absorbed that moisture from the air. So dehumidifier is good to have. Um, anything else? so um but if anything else occurs to me i can let you know and um oh um emily, younger emily is asking what is my favorite piece of equipment that's really hard now i have done a video on my top 10 things i couldn't live without so what i'm going to do again when i come back in after this is finished i'll link that up in the corner so that people can see it um, I don't think I could choose just one thing. I think if there was, say, like a, a fire, touch with that never happens, and I could only grab one thing, although you shouldn't be grabbing anything if there's a fire, Emily, you just go straight outside, um, it would probably be the camera equipment, which conveniently is kept in one box, um, because it was the most expensive. At the end of the day, possessions are possessions. They can be replaced. And in all seriousness, if there was something like a fire, all I'd be grabbing is treacle, my cat, and guessing out because anything else can be replaced. But yeah, if, if it was something that I had the chance to grab one thing, it would be the box of camera equipment. Um, Julie is asking me to do something on building structures. So Julie, I do have a structure video on my channel here, which is for a simple structure, um, which is for... This one, um, which is what I used for the, the Christmas gonk that you saw earlier on, um, he's also been used, it's a very similar structure for the, the pug, um, various different things actually. Um, and this is kind of like my, my most basic structure, so just using really thick wooden dowel um, and then MDF. Um, these are uh, octopus plates, so co commonly used in Spanish tapas. Um, so yeah, there's these, these are quite easy to, to make. 
Um, if people wanted something a bit more complex, so something involving like threaded rod and um, nuts and bolts and things like that, that that would probably have to wait until I had a project to use it on because I do try and make sure my content fits in with what I'm also working on. Um, but yeah, absolutely. If people have video, uh, video ideas or requests, let me know, send me a message or comment below another video and I can always see what I can do. Um, I'm very well, Claire, thank you very much. So I think that's everything. Um, and that is an hour now. So I'm gonna wrap things up there. Thank you so much for joining me, guys. Um, as always, uh, if you aren't already subscribed, make sure you hit that big red subscribe button before you go. Um, of course, if you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up. Um, and don't forget to ring the bell if you would like to receive push notifications for next time I upload a video or of course go live. Um, I'll be back at the same time next week, usual time, 10 o'clock. Um, and until then, take care, stay safe and happy caking. Bye guys. He says, actually, I have no idea how to end the video. So, um, do I click the cross? That's fine.